Hey everyone, today I've got a treat for you. We're going to see the inside of the oldest house in Windsor, which is the Duff Bobby House, built in 1798. Now this is in an area of Windsor known as a neighborhood of Sandwich. It was a village in 1797, and there was a settlement before that, but a village has about 500 people, so that's when it became a village. Now, what we know from the records is that Detroit was founded in 1701, when Anton Cadillac landed in Detroit and left 100 French settlers. They founded Fort Pontchartrain, and then they settled around the area a bunch of key farms. These key farms were like 90 meters wide of waterfoot frontage by three kilometers running back. And the reason it was done like this is because there were no roads. So to transport their grain, they did it along the river. So what we know from our records is that there was a Jesuit mission on the Canadian side around the Ambassador Bridge that was founded in 1747 and there were also farmers around that Jesuit mission so it could be anywhere from 1747 all the way back to 1701 and this area was called the Tic Cote which is translated into English as small sock Right next to us we have a replica windmill which looks a lot like one of the windmills uh, we would have seen back in that day. So what we have here is a replica windmill of what it would have looked like back in 1796. And there were supposed to be about 18 of these windmills around Sandwich. And behind it is the HMCS Hunter, which is a naval reserve. So ahead of us is a beautiful piece of architecture in Georgian style called the Duff Bobby House. This was built in 1798 and it was used as headquarters for two different armies in the War of 1812. First it was used by General Brock for the British Army, and then it was used as headquarters for General Harrison for the United States. And when General Harrison left, he burned down the whole city except this house, which is a Duff Bobby house, and the McGowan Gregor house. Let's find out where the tour begins. I think we enter this way. No. It's here? Hi. Hi there, welcome. Thanks. So you're gonna go down this hallway here and okay. your second left, okay? Okay, thank you. People Hello. think that we're exaggerating. It's just a house, okay. right? Except it's a three-story house with an attic above that and a basement below that and four-foot-thick foundations. So I want you to watch your face. Don't look at me anymore. She's better looking than I am anyway. So I want you to look up. Yeah. Three full floors mm -hmm. plus an attic above that plus a basement below that. It's a massive, massive house. And so when you look at the original drawing from the 1830s, this is done from Springwell across in Michigan. I didn't tell him how to draw this, obviously, but if you look at the, at the picture, the very center is the Duff Bobby House, the Duff Bobby Mansion. 
And it's even in the 1830s, 20 years after the built, or 30 years after it was built, it's still the biggest house, biggest building in all of Sandwich. It's massive for the time. It's bigger than the church, it's bigger than the jail, it's bigger than a schoolhouse, it's massive. It's a huge, huge building. And that street is right there? Yep. Still there? Still there. And so if it, you'll, you'll notice, however, that what's Russell Street? People often ask me, well, was, is the river always that far away? It doesn't make any sense. Why is the house so far from the river? Almost everything on the other side of Russell Street is filled. The river used to be just on the other side of Russell Street. Any questions? We don't know that, but we've got this document here. If you're of an age and you're from Windsor, you may have heard of Hand Secondary School. This is kind of cool. The church warden is William Hands, the guy that school is named after. The church warden, William Hands, and William Parks, they signed this letter. That said they certified that the house was completed in July of 1798. So we know that the house is 225 years old in July of 1798. It may even be a little bit older than that, but we know that it's done and he's got other buildings around that he built in July of 1798. So, any questions for me? Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been a great audience. Thank you very much. You're welcome to go to the second and the third floor. You just can't go into any of the rooms in the second floor. Got another little group here. No, no, no. Yeah. That's the reaction. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's a massive building. Yeah. Really? So this is a picture of Charles Bobby. He was a mayor of Sandwich. Yeah, we're currently we have the town of Damington and the Damington Varsity Historical Society for the Research Program. Here we are in the dining room. So that's how we go exactly then. Yeah. Picture of General Brock and Chief Tecumseh. Prominent figures in the War of 1812. A little presentation on the fur trade. This is James Baby. seen by the doctor. Nice. Yeah, all original. It's just the floors. Are amazing, isn't it? Amazing. So when I read online, he was the last owner until the Ontario Heritage 1979, Trust 1979. It was, yeah. yeah. He took over, and now they're slowly moving out, and they're trying to get it back to the way it was. So really, Very uh, nice. People working yeah. hard to yeah. restore this beautiful mansion. Yeah. They found the original key to the front door. Oh, oh, great. Amazing. Yeah. Not just that it was still available. There it is right there. And artifacts were dug up. Look at that. Yeah, Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. 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 Awesome. And the door only opened up from the inside. You couldn't get access to the front. It was a mansion, so someone was always here to let you in. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there was always someone here because it was considered a mansion. So was there a key for the backside then? Um, I don't... 
I'm not 100% sure David Gough yeah. would know, but I just know that front door is original. With yeah. the L, sorry, the L bracket's original. Yeah. That's the key to only locked from the inside. You mm -hmm. couldn't access from the outside because it was a mansion. People always thought there was always somebody here to let you in. Right. The bulk of the first reading the sandy was done here from the hallway. That yeah. bulk is still there. When I think of uh, locking from the inside, I think of those old big boards. Yes. That would, that would shut there, not yeah. like a key lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Someone always lived in this house until 1979. Awesome. 1798 yeah. to 1979, there was several, yeah. several Bobbies, the doctor. Right. Yeah, it was always somebody here. Very nice, very cool. Mm hmm. You gotta watch your head, sir. You're very tall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you I know. Make it through that doorway. <laughs> Here we head on upstairs. These are used as government offices from the Ministry of Culture. So what is in this door? A closet? Um, no, that's just actually just a second door to that room. Uh, oh, I see. Not too, too sure why. Kind of okay. Separated at one point. All right. Sure. Have you ever seen one? Peek outside. So it looks like these are the original planks. This is huge for a house. Treaty. I was going to get everyone from here to 
Chad and then to, to York. Chad. And Tecumseh looks at Bro Proctor. Proctor never gets much credit for being great, ever. He's very smart, he follows instructions really well, and he knows that they've got to leave, he knows that. But he doesn't get any credit for bravery, although he does an incredibly brave thing right now. Tecumseh is sitting here, I don't know where. Let's say he's sitting here. Tecumseh has taken out his pistols, and he's placed them next to his plate. He's taken out his hunting knife, his hunting knife, and he's placed it in front of his plate. And he knows now that we're planning retreating. So we need to pick on someone a little bit smaller than that. Did you notice how low it is? Yeah. <laughs> so the Thompson says to cry. The words. The smoke. They come out of your mouth. They disappear. You're like a crayfish. <laughs> you don't walk forward very well. You don't even walk backward very well. You just walk south. So we're leaving now, right? We're leaving, you say? We're going from, from where? Did uh, I interpret we're going from here to Chatham, right? So then we get to Chatham, and then you're going to tell us, then we're going, we're leaving Chatham, and we're going to where? Niagara, right? And then we get to Niagara, and then we're going to where? York, right? Then we get to York, and you're going to Montreal, right? And then from Montreal, you're going home, right? And you're leaving us here with the Americans. Yes. We're not leaving. We are going to fight them here. And we're going to beat them here as well as anywhere else. This is where we're going to stay. We're going to fight here and win here. He does the most brave thing of his life. And says, more than just my soldiers to think about. I've got everyone who lives in Sandwich. I've got everyone who lives in Amosburg. If we fight, they're all going to be And so as they're leaving, I need your help, sir. Can you knock on the door? Loudly. Loudly. There's a knock on the door. The sergeant at arms opens the door and says, I'm sorry the Americans have been seen across the river, up by Amosburg. We don't have that long. They're going to make a decision. And so they leave from here. They leave that night and they get to Chatham. They walk from here to Chatham. When they get to Chatham, they stop and they fight the Americans there. She becomes his kid. We lose the area. We lose from here all the way up to York. And the Americans take over. And the neat thing also in the industry, one of the least famous American presidents, William Henry Harrison, was also one of his most famous generals. Um, he's the general who defeats Tecumseh and Proctor and takes over the area. He's the general in charge of all of Ontario, the American general, and in charge of all of Michigan up to Mackinac again. And he, become, he takes his military career and he turns this building into his headquarters. So if you go through the states, you go into most older cities in the states, you'll find a house somewhere with a little plaque that says, President Boone slept here. President Lincoln slept here. President Washington. We can say President Harrison slept here. This was his headquarters. He lived here for most of 1815 and 1814. He's famous as president for two reasons. He has the longest acceptance speech in American history and the shortest presidency. His acceptance speech is in January of 18. 42, I think. I might have that year wrong. Don't quote me. I'm not making that part up. 1842, January. He stands out in the driving, freezing rain for over two hours, accepting the presidency. He catches the chill. The chill turns into pneumonia. He goes to bed, goes into a coma, and he dies. Longest acceptance speech, shortest presidency. So, we want this room to look like it did in September of 1813. We want to set it up so it looks like the dinner's going on. We want a nicer table than your folding tables. We want a real table. We want real chairs. 
That's a built-in, so we know that's 225 years old. The doors are all original. The fire, the, the chimneys are all original. The mantles are all original. They come four feet into the house, as opposed to being outside the house, like most chimneys. Our chimneys are all inside the house. They're all original. Uh, what else can I tell you? The doors are made from black oak, locally sourced, 225 years old. They're called cross and Bible doors. You got the cross on the top and the open Bible at the bottom. All the doors on this floor are made are original. So we want this room to look like it did 225 years ago. And for its anniversary year this year, we're hoping to replace these lovely light fixtures with um, something tin chandeliers. Little, tin, tin chandelier, something a little bit more appropriate. These aren't original light fixtures. <laughs> You probably guessed that this is not 225 years old. Does um, anyone have any questions about the room? While you're here, though, take a look out the window. You can see what we got done last year. Actually, you can't see because it's not there anymore. The area where all the trees are used to be a jungle. And I'm not exaggerating when I say jungle. You could not walk through it. It was too overgrown. We had it cleared away. And we are going to get, we're going to grade that this year, hopefully. We're going to plant the grass seeds, pull out all the horrible stuff that's coming back already. And hopefully, in the next three or four years, we hope that to become sort of a park with a pathway and benches and a little garden. And it will look like it did two years ago. And we've got loonies for landscaping over there. That's where all our fundraising this year is going towards that. That's going to cost. Well, Fourteen thousand dollars this year. Yeah. So we need a lot of loons. If anyone's got a couple loons, any questions for me? Okay, two more things to show you, and then I'm gonna let you go. Come with me. Is that everybody? So we're in the foyer. We'd like this area to look like it did in 1798 when the house was built. The house was built by Alexander Duff. Alexander Duff was a Scottish fur trader. He came to the area, got this parcel of land, and built the house. We know that it was finished in, September, in July of 1798 because we've got this letter right here saying so. Signed by William Parks and William Hands. The church warnings that guaranteed that the house was finished in July of 1798. So, as a fur trader, he built the house to be his residence and his business. So this is kind of interesting. Actually, I found it very interesting. This hook is the hook that held the scale in the way version. For some reason, the hook has survived for 225 years. No one ever thought to cut it out. No one ever thought to get rid of it. Originally, when the Ontario Heritage Trust bought the house, they thought that maybe they can remove it by unscrewing it. But it's not screwed into the joist. It's actually wraps around the joist. And they've tested it. It can hold more than a ton of weight. So it's quite amazing. We're lucky that when Dr. Beasley bought the house in 1905, he knew what he was getting. So he kept it throughout the 20th century, until 1979. Uh, what else can I tell you? So that's the book that held the scale that held the furs, and so from 1798 until 1805, it was a Scottish fur trader's house. In 1805, Jacques Bobby bought it. Jacques and his brother Francis, who lived downtown, Bobby housed the, the museum. They were 
Francis was, uh, was James's younger brother, and they were siblings. They were siblings. They had a terrible sibling rivalry. James had the biggest house in Sandwich. Francis builds his house almost identical, covers it in brick. So I have the same house as you do, mine's covered in brick. And so James says, oh yeah, well I've got dormers. I've got, I've got four dormers in the front of my house. Oh yeah? So then Francis builds dormers on his house too. And they went back and forth like that for most of their lives. They also had every major political office that you could. James had, I'm not exaggerating when I say thousands of acres of land between here and Toronto. Incredibly wealthy man, incredibly powerful man. He was the equivalent of the treasurer for Ontario. Incredibly. So he owns the house from 1805 until 1833 when he dies. Then his son takes over, that's Charles Bobby, the son, becomes mayor of Sandwich. We just had this reframed and we just had it re um, um, improved. There are no pictures, this is a little bit of a joke, but not, not really. There are no pictures of Charles's mother, James's wife. But I can tell you that she was stunningly beautiful. I know this because that's Charles. And would you say he's a good looking guy? That's a good looking guy, right? Okay. We don't know what the mother looked like, but we know what the father looked like. She's a looker. She's really attractive because he is a holy, holy man. Anyway, the one other thing I wanted to show you in this room before I let you go. I need another volunteer. You know what? You were very good to let me try and scare you. I'm not going to scare you now, but I want people to look at your face when I show you something. Okay? Come with me. Look at her face, not me, okay? So the house is built in 1798, right? It's built at a time before power tools. Okay, so there's no electric saws. There's no chainsaws. There's no... Cleaner, like everything is done by hand, right? So, we call this the Duff Bobby Mansion, okay? We call it the Duff Bobby Mansion, and people think we're exaggerating, okay? But when you consider that the house is 225 years old, built by hand, I want you to look up, I want everyone to look at her face. By hand. What do you think? <laughs> this is when you're supposed to go, holy cow! Holy cow! <laughs> it's three full floors above me, plus an attic, plus a basement, full basement, four foot foundations, all by hand. When you look at this picture drawn in the 1830s, I didn't tell the guy how to draw it. I didn't say, just draw the town of Sandwich and put our house in the center and make our house easily the biggest building in all of Sandwich. This is 30 years after it's built. This is 20 years after the war is over. You've got the Duff Bobby house, nothing compares to it. The church is small, the school is small, the jail is small, everything is small. This is massive. This is a mansion, and we're right to call it that. And you should have said, holy cow. <laughs> this is cool. Anyway, there are only three buildings in all of Windsor that predate the War of 1812. This one, which is the oldest house west of Toronto. Our house, the McGregor Cowan house, which is the bake shop around the corner. And the Francis Bobby house in, in downtown Windsor. Nothing else is that old in Newton. These are the oldest places, and this is the oldest house in all of Newton. Any questions for me? I'll let you go then. You can go through the whole house. You can't go into any of the rooms in the second floor. They're all still offices. You can go to the third floor. When you get to the third floor, look at the flooring. Look at the type of wood, because none of this is original. Dr. Beasley had all this redone in the 1920s. This is a doctor's house by then. And so the flooring is all 1920s oak. It's very nice. When you get to the third floor, take a look at the floor up there. That's what the original floor looks like. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Thank you. Thanks for being Thanks for being a good sport. Wasn't kidding. There's the Duff Bobby House, and it is the hold it largest house on the block. Even comes with its own elevator. What's here? Oh, it's her off. What's here? Uh, Looks like it's just the kitchen up there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, just uh, this part is off access. Okay. okay, they should have put like a little rope across, like they did everywhere else. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. So here's the Windsor Museum. What's in here? So here's the Windsor Museum. Looks like it's currently closed. All right, thank you. Take See ya. Now we conclude our trip of the Duff Bobby house. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe.